And we are ready for our presentation and you will be very thrilled with what we are presenting. Um, for now, I want you to locate the chat box and toggle the two icon to everyone to ensure that we can receive your questions and comments as we move through the program today. And let us know where you're logging in from and what kind of work that you are seeking. And uh, if you are a job seeker or perhaps you are an employer, let us know that. So uh, today's agenda will be a welcome success story. Main speaker will be sharing our uh, active job leads, our partner updates, and then next time at Job Club. The mission of Job Club is to provide a positive environment for job seekers to network and learn best practices for the job search. We meet on the second and fourth Tuesday of each month, and you can find a schedule of our topics at www.ukalumni.net slash job club. And I want you to uh, meet our partners. This is the job te club team. I'm Diana Doggett. And I am an extension specialist for special projects. Caroline Francis is the director of alumni career services at UK Alumni Association, as well as Amanda Shagney, associate director of alumni career services. And we also have Nicole Waite, and she is an employment specialist at UK Steps Temporary Employment. Job Club is currently hosted in hybrid format. And that means that we have three options. We have in-person at the Fayette County Extension Office and we welcome you to come and join us. Lots of good networking goes on at that session, at our session. Uh, we are also presenting on Zoom webinar. We have a chat moderator available. So hopefully you've located that and you can um, interact with us throughout the session. And third, we are on Facebook Live. View only, no chat moderator or job lead newsletter. We encourage you to review our free job club resource packet online. And there you will find an array of great interview tips, staffing agency information. We have articles of interest, uh, resume checklist and verb list. And, and, and we just, we know you will find these resources very beneficial. So check that out. Uh, we also invite you to join the Central Kentucky Job Club sharing community on LinkedIn. That's where we post uh, um, throughout our intervals between sessions, uh, articles and job leads. And, and it's just a great place to get connected with others through Job Club. Employers and recruiters are always welcome at Job Club. In-person employer guests, they have a one minute spotlight. So we will ask you to share that at the conclusion of our presentation. Watch your email later today. And we that will include job leads that have been sent, shared with the Job Club team. Some attendees are conducting a confidential job search. And that means that we want to be respectful of privacy. Check out job related re related articles that are included in our job club reminder emails. And also very, very important to to remind you that our recordings and job PowerPoint slides are available at www.ukalumni.net slash job club. So if you've missed a session and want to uh, to catch it, you can just go there and review our recordings with PowerPoint. And now we want to welcome our first timers and uh, remind you that you're going to receive a follow up survey later today. And this feedback is going to place you in our notification system for future programs and information. So you can scan the QR code 
um, on your screen to complete that right now. And we, we really, really encourage you to do that so that we can stay in touch. Do we have anyone in the audience is, that is our first time? Yes, we do. So we welcome each and every one of you. Welcome to Job Club. Success stories, that's always a really, really um, important component of Job Club because, you know, you're here to find the latest strategies in job seeking, but we also want to know those of you that, uh, that, that, that had successes. And, and let me define success. That doesn't mean that you necessarily got the job, but you are on the pro you're in the process. And uh, that means that you've taken the initiative to, to update your, your uh, resume, you are networking, you've reached out to some past um, colleagues or employers. Uh, maybe you have uh, upcoming um, interviews. So in the chat box, if any of this applies to you, please let us know what successes have you experienced uh, in the last couple of weeks. We'd love to hear from you. And um, that's encouraging not only to us as we lead Job Club, but to others who are uh, trying to figure out this, this uh, strategy. And then when you do get the job, we, we, we just really almost insist that you let us know about that. And we do have um, a past attendee that uh, notified us this week that they do have a job. And I'm gonna share that information that, that has been given permission. I got the job. I would like to thank UK Job Club for all of your help. I couldn't do it without your consulting, feedback and networking opportunities. Although I need to shutter my own business for now, I will still be doing almost the same kind of work without the entrepreneur roller coaster of being a solopreneur. At 62 years young, I am on my third act, maybe my encore career, who knows? And I am joining Gain and Company and will be working with companies around the world as a robot and automation consultant selling and help implement the next generation of future stuff. A bit of advice for those seeking a career or switching careers, keep networking. And then in parentheses, it's all the time. Small improvements and activities add up every day and practice interview skills, especially your elevator pitch and concise career goals. Good luck to all, best regards. M. Dwayne Buckles. And we just couldn't be more thrilled. We know, we know Dwayne so well, and we're just rejoicing with him um, on the success in his, his job quest. Do we have any, we have any that we want to? Okay, I know, I know they're out there. So just, just re, you know, remember and remind yourself that uh, it, is, it is a process and there are, are successes along the way and um, make sure that you acknowledge those. Well, we're ready for our presentation at this time. And um, these are just some familiar faces, uh, colleagues. Uh, uh, they are team, the team members of, of Job Club. So we wanna welcome um, our guest speakers. First of all, we have Amanda Shagney. And Amanda is the Associate Director, again, of Alumni Career Services UK Alumni Association. And she brings over 11 years of experience in career counseling services and adjunct faculty roles at UK. She holds many of the highest credentials offered to career counselors, including, um, and I'm not gonna name them all. I'm just gonna tell you that she is so qualified in career counseling and clinical supervision of, of consulting counseling, uh, career trans transition coach, she has um, certifications in Clifton Strengths and uh, type indicators with Meyer Briggs, and the list just goes on and on. So, so Amanda, Amanda knows her stuff. Um, Amanda earned a cer certificate in business administration, a master's degree in counseling psychology, and a BA in psychology from UK, and is a proud life member of the UK Alumni Association. So, Amanda, you're no stranger, and we just can't wait to hear what you are going to share today. Um, her co-presenter is Nicole Waite, and Nicole is an employment specialist with STEPS Temporary Employment Human Resources at UK. 
And the COAS held positions in administrative assisting, patient services management, organizational development, strategic planning, employment retention, and recruitment. She helped select candidates for STEPS temporary positions within UK healthcare. She also works with UK retirees who are interested in returning to work in temporary positions. She is a STEPS temporary employment success story beginning her UK career in 2013 as a STEPS administrative assistant with the College of Dentistry. Nicole is a proud alumna of the University of Kentucky. She completed her BLS in social sciences, minoring in psychology, and continues to study social sciences with an interest in mental health rehabilitation. Amanda, Nicole, take it away. Well, thank you so much, Diana, for your warm welcome. We love our job club community, don't we, Nicole? Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much. This was very, uh, very welcoming. So Nicole and I were chatting about this presentation <clears throat> last week, and, and even in the past couple of months as we've been scheming on this topic, we know that the trends are changing pretty rapidly. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to share feedback on what I'm seeing with my career clients who are active in the job search. Nicole, you're sharing your expertise from many years in human resources. Mm -hmm. And so know that we're, we're coming from a little bit of a different angle in that. So for each of the trends, I'm hopeful, hoping that we'll be able to give some unique context to the job seekers on the call, um, but really excited to share these trends with you. Anything else you want to share for the kind of the intro content there, Nicole? Uh, ditto. My, the mock, that was perfect, Amanda. I just hoping that someone gets something out of this that you guys interact. If you have any questions, please uh, just put them in the chat and yeah, we'll go ahead and take it away. Absolutely. Yeah. Know that this is a conversation and we're watching the chat. We need your engagement as we go along. Nicole, why don't you kick us off? Sure. All righty. Okay, you guys. So I'm pretty sure everyone knows what this is by now. <laughs> um, <clears throat> this beautiful slide here. So we're going to start out by talking about what happened. You know, what, what got us here? What happened? So in March of 2020, the COVID-19, uh, sorry, I should say, yeah, COVID-19 significantly impacted the lives of millions of people, you know, mil millions of people across the world. Uh, this virus impacted lives in a multitude of ways, including the workforce, unemployment rates skyrocketed during the pandemic, and young people, people of color, and women were actually impacted the most. Um, let's see here. So my question would be, you know, how did COVID impact your work life? You know, were you laid off? Um, I don't know. Did, did you, I don't know, did you have to take off to take care of family members? What happened to you? How did it impact your work life? You know, that's a, that's a question that we'd actually like for you to put in the chat. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, sorry, an answer that we like for you to put in the chat so we can discuss that. Um, I can tell you that here in HR, it even impacted our lives. So, um, Nicole, I remember HR told us, and I report through the Department of Philanthropy at UK. They said, "Pack your computer, and you know, it, you may not even need your dual monitor set up. It's just going to be. I mean, it could be a week. It might be two weeks tops. That's it. That's um, it. Grab a couple of books or resources <laughs> to to make the essentials happen at home. But we'll be back in no time." Exactly, exactly. And that, uh, that was the same, you know, it was kind of like, uh, we think, but you know what, let's just be careful. We know we said we're not going anywhere, but we don't know what we're expecting. And then suddenly that week turned into like 18 months. So mm -hmm. uh, it was a quick adjustment. It really was. It was a quick adjustment. Um, of course, not just for us, I'm sure for, for everyone, um, significantly, you know, packing, we were packing, um, multiple screens of course i have multiple screens up at my desk so packing multiple screens home keyboards uh learning you know it had to learn learn some new tricks pretty fast you know i mean so, suddenly everyone had to figure out it during this exactly <laughs> i'm seeing some good responses in the chat here some folks started working remote yeah. um some folks had to pivot a bit um we had a recent graduate at that time that found the job market really hard to navigate that's not yes. surprising right Right mm -hmm. around that time, the job market was tough. Yes, yes, absolutely. It really was. Um, and at this time, we 
oh my gosh, a, a good example to give you guys, we just started doing like, because there were so many people getting laid off, but there were also vacancies. It was, it was really weird. Like you said, everyone trying to figure it out. So we were doing mass hiring. Um, we are office that works Monday through Friday, but we were even working some weekends. So uh, not even just um, weekends, but even longer shifts you know, during the day, you know, our normal eight hour shifts may have turned into 12. Our management team were working around the clock. So mm -hmm. it really impacted everyone's life, truly did. HR was, HR was nonstop. It was like, we were just go live, you know, constantly. I wanna, Someone was always I want to give kudos to your team too. The employment team at UK moved some processes that were never planned to be online. Mm -hmm. They were always in person, like signing your I-9 and like they're, the paperwork that you have to come to HR to fill out when you're a new hire. Mm -hmm. We pivoted that pretty quick. Absolutely. Uh, they made it happen. Absolutely. That is a very great point, Amanda. We did um, uh, go to that. Like you said, would have never thought everyone was, everything was always paper, even with um, um, payroll, you know, our payroll services, you know, we mm -hmm. had to uh, learn some new strategies to get that information, you know, set up direct deposits when people were hired, you know, we had all this paper and then it went to no, you know, it's like, okay, what do we, what do we do? What do we do? You know, everything was digital. So that's a very great point. Um, we did. And then in some cases, um, glad you brought that up. There were some cases where, especially with healthcare workers, where they absolutely had to come in person. And so that was a challenge for, um, HR, you know, for us in our building to build this like safety net, sort of like what they've done and, you know, they did in Kroger, you know, or the grocery stores, I should say, yeah, yeah. with the plexiglass. So we came in. Oh, I forgot about that. This is the yeah. time when everyone was plexiglassing everything Absolutely. and you had to like Clorox your groceries. Yes. All that. Everything. And so we, we had to do those for uh, those healthcare workers uh, like because had to be that one on one. Yeah. For like drug screening, pre employment screenings and things like that. So that had to be done in person. So even working with um, some of the uh, labs that, you know, that we work with to actually send employees to complete screenings and things like that. So yeah. there were many things, like you said, that we absolutely had to change. There were some things, of course, um, that we couldn't change, but we had to accommodate for to make sure mm -hmm. we were all safe, you know? So yeah, very good point. Yeah. So looking back and now that we're about two years into out of, I don't know, still feels like it's in flux. <laughs> I feel like it changes every day. Um, <laughs> But we've got a little bit of research. Research is starting to happen and looking back on that. And, you know, and like any experience like this, you have your good and your negative. Um, mm -hmm. on, on the shadow side of this, we know that people during the pandemic experienced really high rates of mental health concerns like depression and loneliness and high anxiety, financial concerns. Mm -hmm. And so that left folks um, who may have been laid off um, or even those who are working remotely feeling um that adjustment period and change is hard as we know right right That's but it all wasn't negative so I, I wanted I want to flip that too to say there's quite a bit of research that says that for those of us that were working remote maybe we found stride and we're more productive even um mm -hmm. in in work and and um I'll ask Grace that she just popped the link to this article it's really good uh into the chat from flexjobs flexjobs.com is a great remote work job board. So for the job seekers in the room, jot that one down. It's a good one. Um, but, but look, here's some of these examples and benefits of working from home. Um, better work-life balance, less commute stress, location independence. People, a lot of people moved during the pandemic when they were. Oh yeah, right? definitely. Right. Mm -hmm. um, improved inclusivity in hiring. So suddenly we're not uh, limited to hiring only in our geographic targets. So that's a big implication for you, Nicole. Really, really great point. Oh my gosh, that is a really good, good point right there. Mm -hmm. um, people were able to, and I believe we've had job club um, presentations about this. People really got to hone in on those skills, you know, and uh, recruiters paid more attention to those as we, you know, because of the applicant pools, we really had to get creative and say, hey, you know, we know we're used to doing things this way, but let's look at this. Let's see, you know, where we can, um, place someone, you know, just looking at resumes differently, I should say for a Absolutely. Of words. So Absolutely. yeah, that's a really good point right there. And, you know, as a job club facilitator, we're really proud. We never missed a beat during this time. We pivoted online so quickly yeah. and because of our ability to pivot online when such a need, our data tells us that the job club community served at least UK alumni out of folks have logged in out of 32 states. 
and as many as 64 counties out of 120 in Kentucky. That's a big impact. That was so impressive. But it's I not all like, negative. Whoa. I feel like people harp on the negative sometimes, but it's not all bad. No, no. Yeah. I appreciated a little more space at the grocery. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but by and far, you'll see it on this list here, um, positive environmental and sustainability impacts, mm-hmm. the ability to work from home. I'll tell you, the biggest benefit for me was being able to, to do a load of laundry over lunch. It's the little mm-hmm. things, right? The little things, I'm telling you, um, that one uh, that one thing I've heard so much, hey, I can do the laundry. But another one was, hey, you know what? I have my weekend back because some of those weekend chores, I'm able to multitask and do some mm-hmm. of those things, whether it's on break or whatever. So yeah, yeah. You right. want to take the lead on this one? Sure, sure. Okay, let's see here. How did COVID-19 impact the work world? Oh, wow. Okay, so since 2020, companies have adjusted. But coming back to in-person work has continuously been impacted by variants of the coronavirus. Of course, we all know that, you guys. Uh, Some industries grew during the pandemic and others struggled. We also know that. (laughs) So to be true, as some companies closed, et cetera, um, there were also a period of a period of hoarding, which led to some unexpected shortages, inflation of goods, et cetera. Um, HR departments held organizations pivot quickly as COVID-19 related policies passed federal and state governments. And of course, we touch briefly on that, but I'll definitely um, have some more input on that one. Uh, increased use of technology for teamwork like Microsoft Teams. Yes, we live in teams, you guys, I'm telling you, and we still live in teams. So it has just created this bond, you know, this outreach that we just didn't have before. It's so quick, you know, um, yeah, nothing's without reach. The meetings are better, et cetera, and not just within our department, but outside of our department. So that's a great one. Um, slash Zana, which I've never heard of, brought teams together and increased e- efficiency. Um, I know that Amanda, I kind of joked, of course, and everyone else about the hoarding. Oh my gosh. That toilet was, paper. Why yeah. could you not find toilet paper at that time? <laughs> Meanwhile, like, I'm pretty sure my neighbor had a ton of toilet paper. Yes, yes, that was, wow. That was, that was a time. That was, was quite an a time interesting time, right? We'll never forget <laughs> really that. Was. We'll never forget. Looking back, it's funny. Then it was not funny. <laughs> Okay, so the second point though here, how some industries grew during the pandemic and others struggled. Um, when thinking of some of the, um, let's say, some of the like call centers and things like that where people uh, are able to work remote, you know, like you said, for us, we were already in office, but some of these other areas that actually offered working from home type of jobs they, they grew, you know, they, they grew rapidly. Um, and then because not only because of the, you know, of course, all of it was an effect of the pandemic, but also once people really found out that, Hey, this kind of works for me, this works really good. Um, being able to work from home and having kids and daycares, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, a lot of these companies actually grew, um, during that time for, like you said, for different reasons. Um, mm-hmm. and then of course the need, for certain jobs, uh, of course, we know healthcare in general, they, that boomed, you know, whether yeah. it's nursing, nursing assistants, like, exactly, exactly. It wasn't all bad. Some group. Exactly. Exactly. Um, let's see here. HR departments that help organizations pivot quickly. Okay. With policies. You guys, this one is just never ending. It is not complaining about that, of course, but this is something that we really, and I shouldn't say we, but my, like my boss, my boss's boss, there is so much work that has went into this and it, it's, it's ever changing, you know, like, like Amanda, you know, brought up the point, um, you know, our, our, we're, we're not out of it completely. And no. so as things change, and of course, you know, our president sends out email, e- sends out emails, as things change, our policies change you know, uh, different strat- strategies change, our recruitment, uh, some things are borderline, you know, we have standard operation procedures, but those things even have to change to help accommodate. So um, yeah, this one, this one is a really, um, this one is a really good point here, you know, how things change, how things grew. So and I feel like it, else to- it even differs by organization, don't you think? Like, Mm-hmm. not even by absolutely. industry, but by each individual organization takes it a little differently. Absolutely. Definitely. Definitely. So yeah. really good information here. If you guys, uh, uh, once again, feel free to put something in the chat. Um, if you know, uh, you know, have any opinions on how um, COVID-19 impacted the work world or your work world. Mm-hmm. 
All right, let's jump into some of these trends and we'll get the discussion started. This is all really good context um, mm -hmm. for what we're experiencing, but I'm ready to get into some trends and what we're seeing. All righty. So with my clients, hybrid, remote, in-person work modalities is so much, it, it's going to be part of the first conversation. It comes up. Mm -hmm. um, by and far, most of my clients prefer hybrid, even over 100% remote. I, I think there's always going to be folks who want the collaborative teaming uh, in-person engagement. And as an extrovert myself, I want that in-person element too. I think there's a lot of value in that. And that's why we'll always continue to offer job club as, as hybrid is in person too, because we value that in person um, networking and experience. Um, but some employers are starting to use that for recruitment and retention. They're, they're seeing it as a strategy. You want to talk a little bit about that, Nicole? Sure. Absolutely. Um, this is actually, I, I should say this, this option really has built morale and it kind of sparks the, the applicants and, and candidates. Um, I can give an, an example, um, even within our department, you know, with new hires finding out that, hey, I have an option where I get to work home a day. It's like, all right, you know, it, it really, like you said, it really lights them up because um, as you mentioned, and I think you and I have talked about this before, personality driven, you know, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. being an extrovert, some people do not work well just being at home alone and they want that interaction. Um, and as we already spoke about, some people want to be at home. So having this has really just saying, hey, you know what, there's not only work in the office. It, well, yes, I should say we have 100% work in the office. Uh, there are very few 100% remote, but we do have them. And not only just here in state, but even out of the state uh, with the University of Kentucky, definitely want to point that out. Mm -hmm. But that hybrid option really seems to work good for some people because I'm telling you, like you said, there's the good, there's the bad, and then there's, okay, I don't want to be at home with my kids every day and not need you. <laughs> <laughs> so if I can have a day in the office, that works also. So yeah, it, uh, it's definitely been really good, but I like, um, let's see here. Remote, um, remote work also has just opened up a lot of opportunities, let's say for uh, research and students, because there are some sometimes where there's actually not an absolute need for someone to be in office um, mm -hmm. the time. And so, like I said, especially in those type of positions there, you know, so, and this kind of ties into the next slide. So yeah, um, what I was going to go into here. With the training topics about in in person hybrid remote work, great great point here. There are many people who were able to be at home. You know, although you know we have some people that want to work hybrid, but we're just completely work for them. Uh, some people with disabilities or or the elderly, as you see in this picture here, uh, on this PowerPoint here they didn't have to have so many accommodations with going in the office, you mm -hmm. know, that, uh, as we mentioned in an earlier slide with uh, parking also, but more so in the office, you know, everything's already set up for them, their desk, it's already been made. So it was kind of more, you know, could have brought, I shouldn't say speaking for them, that it was more comfort, but could have brought more comfort to mm -hmm. them with being at home, you know, not as stressful, not as strenuous. Well, I imagine being on campus, of course, parking is, is a challenge always. That's mm -hmm. a, if any large organization, that's going to be a challenge. Mm -hmm. But for folks maybe who are in a wheelchair, the elevator's out and they work on a top floor, well, then they're going to have to work remotely anyways. But at home, they're kind of already ready to go. It's already set up for the universal design that they need. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and even with, uh, um, you know, of course, we don't want to li limit it to people with disabilities, but like you said, retirees or, you know, it could be someone that I don't know who has a, a broken leg or something, but you know what? Mm -hmm. it's like, hey, you know what? I'm at home. I can work. So it really opened up that market. It really brought it. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. And then we talked a little bit about how um, hiring managers and recruiters, HR, are able to use this to target groups. They're no, they're no longer limited geographically in that way. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. a big selling feature. It really is. Um, and this was actually a time uh, where I should say like career fairs and things like that, where we were able 
to, because there's so much virtual now, I should say, um, as mentioned, we don't hire just here in state, but out of state also. And so being able to attend those fairs, uh, other people be able to attend those fairs virtually where otherwise they would not have mm-hmm. been able to go out and do or struggle doing so, I should say. So this really, yeah, this really helped us in that way. Very good. All right, let's move into our next trend here. Generational impact varied greatly throughout the last two years. Um, Know that uh, whenever we're talking about the generations, these are approximate ages here. Five generations in the workplace now. Um, The workforce is pretty diverse in terms of age now. And many of us are still navigating as Gen Z are graduating from college and high school and entering that workforce. So they're shaking it up a bit, which is a good thing. So in the chat box here, um, what generation do you identify with? And just curious uh, what your thoughts are on that first um, trend. What are your thoughts on hybrid and remote work? So you're welcome to share that into the chat as we continue the conversation here on generations in the workplace. Now, we know that generations experienced um, COVID in different ways because of the context in which they've had their experience throughout their lives. But businesses need to be careful to integrate um, multiple generations into their recruitment plans too. And so knowing this context on their end can be really valuable. And so what we saw in career services is many of the baby boomers who are looking to retire right around that time, they hunkered down a bit. They're like, okay, remote work's not bad. Um, I'm going to delay retirement a bit because I don't know what the impact, uh, the financial impact is going to be on my 401k on my retirement plan. Uh, if I were to go ahead and retire out now. So now is a good time to delay retirement. Yeah, yeah. And now in the meantime, I think they've started picking up retirement. Are you seeing that at UK too? Yes, yes. Yes. I'm so glad you brought this point up because as mentioned, I work with retirees. And so both trends, you know, there were some people that were like, hey, you know, and then, uh, you know, that, that I, yeah, I was going to go ahead and go into retirement, but they really need me right now. So let me hold off and help train the new yep. staff that are coming in. Or, um, uh, you know, of course, some leads may have wanted to supervise their positions, supervisors, directors, et cetera. So um, having that, that knowledge and um, that experience, you know, a lot of them stayed. But once again, because of the department that I work in, uh, they may have stayed through temporary employment, mm-hmm. you know, speaking for uh, the university. And so, um, there was definitely an uptick. There was definitely an uptick, but, um, you know, and, and all of them expressed how busy it was, but they also expressed how much they knew, uh, their, how much they knew their skills, wisdom, and everything would have a great impact. And that they, you know, they would not, they had a passion for the job for life of works. Mm -hmm. And so they didn't want to leave anyone hanging. That's just, you know, so, um, they retired and some of them would actually, very few would still work the full schedule. So what they done was reduce their schedule. They would reduce their hours, but mm-hmm. they were there. You know, they were there. They were there to make sure those clinics were still running, there to make sure that patient services didn't lack. And so that dedication was really, really impressive. It was really impressive. And so, um, but yeah, and it's still, it's, you know what, you guys, it has not stopped. It's still, it's still going on, you know, those retirees come, I, you know, what a perfect example, I even had someone that decided to retire and we were going to go ahead and, and get them in and get them on board. And she was just like, you know what? No, I know they need me. I'm not ready. Uh-huh. And I was like, wow, you know? Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. This it, generation it, that's retiring, they're so incredibly loyal. And I think yes. that's a trait that's often often overlooked in our baby boomers. Baby boomers mm-hmm. are loyal group. Yeah, yeah, it's the perfect word. She very, very loyal, very loyal. Didn't want to leave anyone hanging. So we have baby boomers that are starting to retire out and there's a lot of baby boomers. Um, and there's less Gen Z entering the job market. There's a bit of a population gap in that there's less, um, less entering the workforce than there are leaving. And so that's contributing to some of the talent shortages that we're hearing about and we're reading about. It's not the only reason, but I'm sure, sure you've read a little bit about this thing called the great resignation, right? Oh, yeah. We've all seen articles on that. Yeah. But a lot of what's happening with that is baby boomers are leaving the market, Gen Z's coming into the market. And there's a trickle effect that's happening where everyone's wanting to move up the progression or, or maybe in the last two years, they were working remotely and thinking, hmm, thinking really hard about what they want. It's Mm -hmm. a good time to make a transition in that way, Mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. 
Absolutely. It is. It's, it's, it's as we, uh, the key word that we always use, it's an employee's market right now. You know, it's a, yeah, it is. Right now. so yeah, there's, there's so much out there. There's so many, there's not just that standard way of working. Um, and that's like you said, across generations. So yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Just a few more notes on multi-generation workforce and the great resignation trend. Um, younger generations are living more frugally due to this financial insecure uncertainty. And I would say baby boomers are a little more comfortable in retiring now, but two years ago, right when COVID hit, a lot of them hunkered down and delayed retirement. Younger folks are less likely to purchase a home right now. That could be due to student loan debt. There's lots and lots of articles on that. But the differences in financial security among the generations, it's a trend. It's something that we have to talk about. It's very important. And I think that's why we see more job transitions, is my personal opinion. I think that's why we see more job transitions among the younger generations is because they're motivated to move forward to get rid of some student loan debt, to be able to move forward into more financial stability. Mm -hmm. Unlike some of our baby boomers who've been incredibly loyal to an organization, uh, employers are going to have to compete for some talent now. Yeah. What, yeah. Do, what do you think? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, uh, good, good point right there, Amanda. Um, we honestly, the average I'm going to say that we see with a younger generation, maybe, you know, that they're, they're going to give it a couple of years. If yeah. it's not a good fit, then, you know, they're, then they're, they're changing jobs. You know, they definitely are. They're changing jobs. And as you mentioned, um, even, you know, like I said, some of them may be coming out of school with degrees and things like that, but that financial stability, um, that has seemed to be the key factor right now with, hey, you know, mm -hmm. let's get some debts out of the way. Let's take care of some things. Um, and then some of them are still in graduate school and things like that also. So, or, you know, knocking out some debts and then going back into graduate school. So it's kind of like, hold up, you know, wait a minute, you know, before I go in and um, start making these big purchases, et cetera. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's just go ahead and get financially locked in, but yeah, definitely the, the change in jobs. So that's the, I should say the biggest trend is uh, definitely. not staying on those jobs as long. Yeah. Curious what you think, Nicole, about another trend that I'm reading a lot about is the well-being movement, how younger generations that really have a focus and transparency on mental health concerns, even um, maybe more likely to share that they have depression and anxiety and need additional support and how organizations are starting to focus on employee well-being and health. I know UK mm. does a ton for this. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Do you see that increasing or kind of saying the same? What do you see for the future in that? Yeah, we did. Uh, especially during that first, you know, like, like 2020, I just remember that was another area. Um, those type of services, that was another area within, you know, HR and the University of Kentucky in general, where it was like, these services are offered, these services are offered. There were so many people, at, you know, that were impacted, as I mentioned, personality driven, there were a lot of people that didn't like being, you know, challenged, I shouldn't say didn't like, but that were challenged with being, you know, just kind of mm -hmm. locked in. And so um, even going, like you said, working with IT and going to uh, having all these virtual meetings available, you know, uh, the information was pushed out more, not just to, you know, students, but also to employees. Um, who have made it may have needed those mental health services someone just to talk to express how they're feeling how they're being impacted how the work because like you said a lot of people may have enjoyed the the work and the hybrid work but there were some that did not you know so being yeah. able to have that um how that resource was was uh, it was it was great honestly it was it was great and it was it was very much sought after and used utilized I should say so I, I suspect we'll see more organizations doing this, like UK's Good Work Life Group. Mm -hmm. There's counselors dedicated to employees at UK. Great mm -hmm. service. Um, yeah. But I, I think we'll see more and more employers thinking about their benefits more robustly in that way, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't know that trend. I don't see that trend going away at all. Mm -hmm. no, There's yeah. some great uh, discussion in the chat box here about um, which, which uh, generation you identify with and your thoughts on remote work. So if you haven't checked that out. Please do, but for the sake of time, we, we're going to keep rolling, Nicole. Okay. You want to talk a bit about this next trend about money? Yes. Oh my gosh. So, minimum wage tracker. Of course, we're uh, well. Many of us. I don't know if all of us are aware of the minimum wage. You guys um, here in the state of well, I shouldn't just say the state of Kentucky, but minimum wage. Um, and so this. <laughs> 
oh my gosh, you guys, this is what actually one of my favorite topics. If it was left up to me, you know, I would give everyone a million dollars, but can't do that. <laughs> we're not I budgeted for that. you for queen of the world. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah, we're not budgeted for that. But no, <laughs> really, um, we of course had to pay great attention to uh, pay and wages uh, even more you know, more so during this time, um, you know, people were offering jobs and um, I shouldn't say people, but companies were desperate for employees. They were desperate for workers. And so it kind of forced us to look at, you know, compensation and with the competition, there were people was like, hey, you know what, I've been at a job for 12 years, but this company is offering me and my, my family, you know, X amount more dollars a year. And then I have this excellent benefits package, et cetera. And so, um, you know, we've definitely had to take this head on and do research. And, um, you know, I shouldn't say just say be a great competitor, but also be able to provide, um, you know, provide for our employees, I should say, a reasonable and a decent amount of uh, money so that they're able to live, live comfortably, go out and, you know, because inflation, a lot of uh, products, not only did they leave the shelves, but the costs of, of, items increased. And so, you know, we definitely are proud that, um, you know, we did take some kind of, kind of be proactive and take some initiative and increase our pay, which I think we're going to talk about, um, falling in the next slide also. Um, but we went ahead and, and increased our rate to, um, $15 an hour, uh, for many, the base rate, I should say for many of our jobs, you know, that were way below that. Some of them, um, some of the jobs that was a, that would, was a $5 increase, um, Wow. at the least, you know, That's you know changing for people. absolutely, absolutely. Some of them were just making like $10 an hour. And so, uh, or a little more, I should say than $10 an hour. So, um, that has definitely helped not only with, um, like you said, not only so much as with retention and, um, onboarding in general and recruitment, but more, you know, like I said, the, the important thing here was to be able to help families to be able to live, to survive with the, with the change and the impact that um, COVID had on, on the world. So, wow. and of course you guys can see down here, I'm not sure how good everyone can see down there at the bottom, you know, we've highlighted Kentucky right there and, and which is um, increasing the minimum wage by uh, to $15 by 2024, which once again, we've already, um, done in many of our areas here. You can see here the 28.7% right there, um, would be directly affected. So that's, that's huge. You guys, that is, that is huge. And so we're definitely still working on that. Um, it's great that I see that even some other companies are following suit, but, uh, um, definitely glad that we were proactive in trying to get that done for our employees and applicants and candidates. That's something I'm really proud of to be a UK mm -hmm. employee is that UK took an early stance on, on wage fairness and wage equity in those types of ways. Mm -hmm. and, and that does create a compression um, of salaries at all salary, um, all salary levels are experiencing levels of inflation when they go to the grocery store. You can find toilet paper now, but it's more expensive, right? Absolutely. Um, and I think UK has been proactive in addressing some of those too. So some recent emails from our president talking about their investment to salaries that are coming, I'm really grateful for on a personal level. Mm -hmm. um, and with my clients, I'm seeing that uh, more and more organizations are starting to counter to keep their employees, to keep their talent. Mm -hmm. And so the bigger conversation about wages is it seems to be a bit more negotiable. Is yeah. that what you're seeing too? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Within, uh, as long as it's within budget, then yeah, certainly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's move into a little bit more Kentucky uh, specific data here. Um, and uh, we'll pop the link to this, uh, this read into the chat. This is a good one to flag just to read through later. Um, but the latest economic update as of what, March, 2022 um, tells us that the labor force has increased every month of 2021, we've added a ton of workers and we're almost to where um, pre-employment levels were before COVID. 82% um, of the jobs lost in the initial month have been recovered. Uh, so we're headed in the right direction at least. So that's encouraging. Of course, there's always um, continued efforts and, and more that we can do in these areas. 
but the trends are looking favorable for this one too. And, and even um, from our governor, you can see that there's lots of investment happening at the state level toward economic outlook and efforts into workforce development, which are greatly appreciated. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, moving on, let's talk a little bit about the future of work. You want to take the lead on this one, Nicole? Sure, sure. Okay, so that first one right there. Mm -hmm. Cities may have smaller head offices, you guys, um, which it all makes sense, of course, if you have people that are moving home and working more, then um, yeah, there's there's a less need for office space. Mm -hmm. You know, there were some companies, of course, that uh, were ready to get their employees back in office. And then there were other companies that are just like, hey, you know what? We really can't survive without this office space. And so that saves the company money and things like that. So there are um, smaller offices. And, um, you know, like you said, some people may want to be at home or, I mean, in the office. And then some um, uh, people may need to actually uh, not just stay in the office for various reasons, as I mentioned, like what our office with completing some pre-screenings and I-9s and things like that in person, the bare minimum, I should say, is needed. So... Yeah, let's see here. Okay, home on, homeowners may seek home environments that are conducive to remote work, um, like dedicated office space. Absolutely. Um, gig work is still important to our ever evolving world. Many, many people started businesses. They did. Many people started businesses or like I said, a little side hustles. Uh, I think a lot of talent, talent, you really like surfaced, you know, people were more, um, had more courage about, hey, you know what? I see everyone starting these businesses and I've always wanted to do this or that, or I have this niche for this. And so a lot of people started their own businesses. Uh, let's see here, employees may dedicate more efforts to recruitment and retention. Absolutely. Um, employee mental health should remain a focus of the conversation. We just spoke about that. It's That's definitely not going away. Much needed. Concerns can often go overlooked in employment sectors, and that should not be the case, especially in a pandemic. Mm -hmm. Okay, so employee uh, employers may dedicate more efforts to recruitment and retention. Um, yes. <laughs> Yes, uh, we've had to change, as, as I think I've mentioned, some of our, uh, we have our standards, but, you know, there were times because of the evolving and changing world that we're in right now, we've had to change our um our efforts, you know, we had to change some of the ways that we recruited and go out and do more um, recruiting, attend more job fairs, as I mentioned, the virtual job fairs, things like that, uh, have more conversations with um, candidates that we interview or applicants that we interview. And so it's take it's taken more, we've had to do more research, I should say, and not even just here locally, but, you know, um, just across the, like I said, we, we hire outside of Kentucky, so across the United States. So anything that you, as far as like resumes, people reaching out to? I think a lot of folks um, related to, I'm thinking about the remote and hybrid. That's, that's in so many of my conversations. They want to know like, how do I find hybrid or remote only jobs? Sometimes it doesn't, like the job postings don't always say, they're not always transparent of, is it eligible? Is it in person? So I, I'm seeing more employers market what the modality of those jobs are, mm -hmm. or if it's um, hybrid eligible, which means maybe there's an onboarding period where you're in the office, like maybe for the first three months, six months, whatever the probationary period is in the office, hundred percent. So you can get to know the team, get mm -hmm. to know their standard operating procedures, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And then after that, maybe you're eligible for a two, three split, um, for hybrid mm -hmm. and remote work. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I really think that trend's not going away. It's not, it's not. And I'll tell you what, the, another uh, a bullet point here, homeowners may seek home environments that are conducive to remote work, like dedicated office space. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, that kind of ties into that uh, next bullet point, employee mental health should remain a focus of, of these conversations. Uh, one thing to point out that 
or share it with us. Many of the times it's trying not to have your office space like in your bedroom or something like that, you know, really being able to separate that um, office space and dedicate it to work versus putting some of this, you know, putting office spaces and things like that in more relaxed private areas and being able to separate work and home, although it is at home. So like you said, there's the, the good and the bad, the plus and the minuses. And so I believe that's Always. what owners are seeking, you know, that space. Okay. Always. Mm-hmm. Well, we talked a little bit about unemployment and when we were talking about wages, but we know that unemployment is trending down and totally transparent for Kentucky. We've always performed poorly in these areas for a lot of factors. Um, of course, health rates in Kentucky, health factors are not, not always optimal in Kentucky. Child care options, um, substance abuse challenges in Kentucky are certainly a factor in here. Um, but on the positive spin, it is trending better. And all of this data does indicate that it's a candidate's market, which you mentioned earlier. Uh, mm-hmm. And that is exciting for, for my clients to see that they're more competitive in a pool that maybe um, three or four years ago, they were not as competitive in. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it's, not as, it's not as late back. It seems like there's just a... Um, even with, I don't know, there's, there's more of a, there's more of a drive, I should say mm-hmm. now. So yeah, yeah. Um, employment, hiring trends. And as I, as I mentioned previously in the other, in the other slide, our recruitment strategies have just changed so much. And we're definitely, uh, that is the one thing that I can bullet point that we're definitely hitting the ground more, more so than just receiving applicants we're actually going out and just you know actually looking for some of our talent also Mm -hmm. and I'm thinking about some of the comments there in the chat too we're always going to have folks that have a tough job search I don't want anyone to hear this content and be like oh the job search is really easy you could apply for a job and be employed tomorrow getting a job is still a job right it's still a tough process Mm -hmm. Um, but using strategies, effective job search strategies. That's, that's what Job Club is here to support you in, right? That's what our, our alumni career services support and our experts are, are here to support you in for that too. Yeah. All right. Anything else you want to add for unemployment before we move forward on that one, Nicole? I don't think so. No. Yeah. Okay. Um, you want to talk a little bit about the future of hybrid and remote? Yes, uh, absolutely. Um, uh, once again, you know, this is something that's not going away. Uh, and not only is it not going away, it has uh, increased morale, it's increased retention, um, excitement. Uh, it has, um, this makes me think about, let's say, uh, parents and, you know, with children and uh, even parents or people who may take care of the elderly or something mm-hmm. like that. This really, I mean, this shame, you guys, it really is. It, it's a game. What, what was absolutely not possible is possible. You know, it is possible. But I have seen that more people are asking about remote work, you know, yeah. um, except for, of course, like you said, in some healthcare areas, we know that that's just impossible and people are not actually asking for that. But uh, as far as like, you know, office clerical, some administrative jobs, um, things like that, anything that could be done through a laptop, through a computer and with devices, you know, cameras and things like that. It is, it's constantly, it's constantly asked for. And there are some, you know, some areas and some managers who've just found out, you know, um, that, hey, this works. And if, if this was, if this is what makes my employees happy, if this is what actually has brought some employees back, then I don't want to fail to mention that also. Some employees have left, mm-hmm. um, you know, and have come back because of accommodations. It's like, hey, you know, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're able to do that. And so this person is coming back. So um, yeah, yeah, this is, it's not going anywhere, you guys. Not at all. I don't. I don't think so. And I know many of people wanted that, like you said, that that feel and wanted to. Hey, one of things going to come back to normal. But I just believe this is this is the new normal. It's the new normal. We're not going to go back to pre-COVID. I feel like there's an there's an adjustment period, which is hard. It's hard for everyone. Yeah. But we're not going to go back. We're going to keep moving forward. But Absolutely. at the same time, I want to show you a couple of articles that I've read. There's so so yeah. much reading to do on this. Mm-hmm. Not all organizations are on board with hybrid and remote work. 
And so some organizations like Goldman Sachs, you may have read about their, um, their press that really want their org- their employees in person. And that's the culture that they want. Yeah. And even to the point that they're willing to, to lose a significant amount of their workforce, um, which is a, a tough go. Um, but every organization gets to choose that. I think their leadership gets to choose what their, their structure is, what their organization is. And, and as candidates, it's our responsibility to, to learn if it's a good match or not through that, through the interview process, through the application process. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's not a good match. Maybe it is, but, but we need to know. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And you can see there's so, so much reading on these. Oh, wow. Um, just articles and, and these are all within the last couple of months. Say hello again to the office. <laughs> some, some folks Sketchy. really wanted it's... to be back and that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've seen this, the great reshuffle, the great resignation, the great pondering. There's so many art, like articles and namings for what this will be. And, and the research is just starting to come out. So I'm, I'm so excited for what this means for future research articles and studies on workplace culture, employee engagement, and how employees can be engaged in different ways in hybrid and remote modalities. So as a learner, lots to read here. And that's really fun. Um, what we haven't talked about in, in terms of hybrid and remote that I want your perspective on, Nicole, is tax implications for working outside of the state that your organization's in or working outside of the country. We saw a trend with people in the last two years who were like, hey, I'm remote and I've always wanted to move to X, Y, Z. They're going to do it. And so some people left. What does that mean for tax stuff? Okay, uh, I'm glad you brought that up. And so um, we've had to, that was one of those things, like I said, uh, mentioning payroll services that we had to um, develop a plan on fairly quickly. And so um, simple, a simple resolution was, hey, we have documents that we send our remote hires mm-hmm. um, and whether it's interns, regular positions, whatever the case it may be, but we have documents that we send our hires, um, supervisors, and the new hire um, complete the document, basically stating, you know, what what state they're going to be working in, what county or whatever, because there are different, you know, tax requirements, and that gets sent to our um, to our payroll services, and so um, to, just to make sure that those taxes are being paid there also, and so. Um, not exactly sure all the back work that went into doing that, but I can just tell you that this simple document was uh, uh, birthed out of it that helped to say, hey, we want to make sure um, that taxes are being paid correctly where mm-hmm. this person works. Um, now we are, uh, unfortunately, you know, we can't do any uh, hiring or anything like that for anyone that's out of the country, you know, mm-hmm. say like Canada or anything like that. Uh, it's, it's all in state. But even, like I said, even with so, with the talent that we have here, payroll has just developed just a streamlined process for that also. So I yes, think a lot of organizations not, are trying mm-hmm. to figure that out mm-hmm. and have, have attempted to figure that out in the last year now, probably. So you think, yeah. 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 I'm yeah. loving the chat box right now with uh, folks' thoughts on the future of work modalities. I wish I had a crystal ball to see what was going to happen. Um, but I feel really positive about the future. I think it gives more power to employees. Uh, yeah. And I, I think that that's good and healthy. The market can change and employers yeah. can adapt to what employees need needs are. I'm, I'm really optimistic about it. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Oh, oh wow. there's one more article that just popped wow. up. Wow, the great nation continues. 40% of workers look for new jobs. Isn't that wow. insane? Wow. Okay. Four big takeaways for what this means for you as a candidate. The first one is that it's it's a really good time to be on the market. All of the trends are favorable to the candidate. And so while the job search, I don't want anyone to misconstrue that and think like, oh, the job search is easy. The job search is still something that you need to have a strategy for. You need to dedicate time to. Um, but I'm seeing with my clients more success in a quick, in a, it's much quicker relative. So, you know, and clients will always ask me, how long does the average job search take? I mean, it could be, it could be six months. It could be a year. It depends on how big of a shift you want to make. If you're making a significant career change, sometimes you have to take a bridge job or a pivot job pivot to mm-hmm. make those happen. So everyone's job search is different and unique to you. Your mm-hmm. strategy is different and unique to you. If you need support on that, that's what job clubs for. 
That's what career counseling services or alumni career services is for. Um, and I'll share more about that. But all the trends are favorable for you as job seekers. And that means that there's less competition among candidates right now. Employers are telling us that their pools, their candidate pools are less robust than they have been in previous years. Absolutely. You want to do this one, Nicole? Sure. Okay. So what does this mean uh, for you as a candidate? It's a wonderful time to be a career changer. Um, and of course, make sure your resume interview <laughs> communicates your relevant transferable skills, as we've already mentioned, and we're going to continue to mention you guys, because we do not want you to sit on talent. Uh, a lot of people, until they go back and they um, have these meetings, like with alumni services, and look at the skills that they have, they, you know, they may not realize that, oh, okay, you know, I do have what it takes, you know, because they've been doing something for so long, they, they may not realize that they have other skills that can be utilized in different areas. But um, it's a wonderful time to be a career changer. Um, you know, once again, with some of the, um, I'm just going to talk about the retirees again, with some of the retirees that are leaving, even though someone may have come from an example, nursing, they may not be going back necessarily into a nursing position. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've seen that some of them are going into research positions. Mm-hmm. Um, some of them are going into training and development, um, organizational development, things like that, you know, positions that are not so much hands on on what they were doing exactly. And they actually enjoy it, you know, because, hey, you know what, there's a little bit of what I've done. And then there's something, you know, that I'm I'm able to use what I know and use it in a different way. Mm. So that career, uh, that career change has been really, that has been really big. And not only, like I said, not only with retirees, but also, as we mentioned, with some of the younger generation, um, they're more prone to change. They're more prone to try something different. And we have had, yes, we have had many success stories, um, you know, with that. I, I know there was one that we had here at Job Club. Um, earlier this year, um, who just, she went back to school, you know, she went back to school and she went out and didn't settle for that first job offer. She's like, it just didn't feel good. It's not what I wanted. And you guys, she came back and um, she used some of these skills that she learned, some of the tips I should say that she learned in the job club, got the job that she wanted, the pay that she desired. And like you said, there's not always that it, it, it wasn't easy. That wasn't her first, hey, you know, I graduated, I got a job. It wasn't the first one. She just continued on and was like, let me not be so desperate. I know this is a market for me right now and I'm just going to keep looking. So yeah, we, we have had some success stories about career changes, um, going back to school, things like that. So I love those stories too, because uh, the words that you use, I think are so representative of what I see with career clients. People are seeing value in their past experience applying to something completely new. Mm-hmm. And for most people, it's terrifying, but in a fun, exciting way. In a fun, exciting way. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Next one. Um, be sure to negotiate. The market is so negotiable right now. Now, that doesn't mean that if the employer offers you um, X dollars that you should double down. That's, that's not what I'm saying. Uh, but I'm saying now is the time that things, the the candidate has a bit more leverage. And so you can ask for not all of these things like a checklist, but you're able to be more creative in the negotiation process and negotiate hybrid after a certain amount of time in the office. Maybe it's remote a couple of days a week. Um, We're seeing employers counter to keep their talent after an initial offer. So if you think that um, your current employer might counter to keep your talent, There are risks associated with that too. Please schedule with us to talk about strategy for that. Um, You can win big, but you can also lose big in this in these types of conversation. Um, But we're seeing folks get signing bonuses, moving expenses, um, more paid time off. The the market is pretty negotiable right now, more than I've seen in the past. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, this one's you, Nicole. Alrighty. Yeah. Alrighty. So what does this mean for you as a candidate? Um, many first time, uh, first round interviews are being held via Zoom or Teams rather than phone or um, phone or in person, unlike the past. 
uh, practice with these technologies prior to interviews if you are not familiar with them already. And this is very true. Uh, many of our interviews have shifted to Zoom. Uh, well, at first, of course, it was mandatory, but now it's optional. And so we find that it works out well, though, for uh, people, especially, of course, we know that there are some people out here who have jobs that have jobs, I should say, um, who are looking for a job. And so having that Zoom option actually uh, helps them with time management. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, and that that's actually the biggest feedback or the big, you know, that we get back is that, oh, this will really help me because I'm working or I have this. So if we could do Zoom, I can actually, I can actually interview quicker versus mm -hmm. I, I cannot do it until next week. And then where this market is, like you said, where everyone is just like, so taking, yeah, yeah, taking jobs so fast it's really, it's really important that we are able to interview and offer our, um, you know, send information to managers and supervisors pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we are definitely doing less, um, Oh, I should say, I shouldn't say we're doing less steps, but we've kind of um, worked out a process where our steps are not taking as long, you know, mm -hmm. because of course we still want to do some screening and things like that, but sure. Zoom has definitely increased. But I think that it sounds like the process has been has had to str be streamlined because of the competitiveness competitiveness Absolutely. of the market. So I hear yeah. you. Absolutely. Yep. Um, by and far, this is the same for my clients too. Most mm -hmm. of them have technology driven video interviews over a first round phone interviews, mm -hmm. and I would add to this one less rounds of interviews before a potential offer. So there might have been three or four rounds of interviews and maybe there's two or three rounds now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, lots of references in here. We're happy to share those and they'll be on the recording if you need those. Know that Alumni Career Services is here to support you in that, Caroline. And I and Grace in the chat moderation there um, serve life and active members of the Alumni Association. Anyone can join the Alumni Association to take advantage of our services. You do not have to be a UK alum. We love serving our UK alum, but we serve many that are not, and we're happy to do so. You can get more information on those at ukalumni.net forward slash career. For the sake of time, I think we're going to skip questions. I didn't see any in the chat there, and we'll go ahead and move into the hiring component, if that's okay, Nicole. Sure, sure. Um, you're welcome to tag team these with me, too. You can give your updates for steps. Um, but employers that have job leads, please post those into the chat now. If there are any employers in the in-person audience, give Diana over at Extension a wave and we'll get you up to the podium for your one minute spotlight. So we'll watch for those um, as they come into the chat here. Diana, do we have anyone in person that needs the, um, the audio privileges? No, not right now. Okay, lovely. All right, well, I'm gonna keep moving. If someone does pop up, that's no problem at all. Um, Job Club Facilitators News. Diana, you want to give your update? Sure. Um, I just want to make everyone aware that spring is here, even though we're getting lots of rain. So that's going to um, create even more incentive to get out and um, check those lawns and gardens and plant. So um, check your, your extension office. They have lots of great uh, programs going on, resources for spring, um, in addition to a, a whole array of other subjects. And every county in Kentucky, all 120 has, a, has an extension office. So we want you to take advantage, make sure that you are connected and um, stop by the Fayette County Extension Office for sure, because they have lots going on. Nicole, do you want to give your update from Steps briefly? Sure, thank you, Amanda. Um, sorry about that. Guys, I think there's a little noise uh, right here. But uh, yes, um, I will actually send you guys. Um, well, I should say I would send uh, uh, Amanda links to different positions that we're hiring for in Steps. But a big position that we're trying to fill right now is uh, if anyone has any medical assisting experience, that will be great. Um, we are recruiting for medical assistants, uh, administrative assistants. There are a few jobs on the campus side that we're um, hiring for as well. 
but uh, medical assistance is really high up on the uh, list right now. So I'll get that link sent so that we can post it in our job club group on LinkedIn. And uh, you guys, of course, take time out if there's any other areas. We're not limited to that. There are uh, hundreds of jobs out there. So please take the time out to uh, go on to our UK uh, Human Resources job webpage there and search, just put in the search engine what type of work you're looking for. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out, email, uh, reach out to me and email me personally uh, if you have any issues or trouble. Thank you so much, Nicole. It's fantastic. All right. Um, quick update from Alumni Career Services. Know that we're here to support you in your job search as, you're, as um, you need additional support. I want to make the group aware of a program that we have going on at the end of the week. I just put a link um, to the uh, schedule in the chat there, ukalumni.net forward slash leadership week. Um, we're having a, this is our second annual time doing this virtual conference. Alumni from across the country are doing professional development topics, including work-life balance. Um, we're do, we have a great alumni panel as the kickoff. So looking forward to that. We have some really heavy, hitter, heavy hitters uh, for alumni panel on that one, um, but know that you're most welcome. We welcome the job club community to register for that free professional development program. I'll make sure that information's in the job club newsletter this afternoon. I'll send it to Suzanne. And it looks like Courtney's put in some job leads from CMI Consulting. Want to make sure that everyone in the chat see, or everyone who's active can see that in the chat as well. All right, next time at Job Club, simple strategies for your UK job search. We're really excited to welcome Sarah Bowes and Emily Kurtzinger back to the UK or to the Job Club program. Uh, Sarah's presented with us before, and we're excited to have her back. For those of you that are UK employees or looking to get on at UK, there is some really specific feedback about the job board IES that you need to know. Um, and they'll be giving some good strategy information too. So we would love to have you join. We'll put the link to register into the chat there. It looks like Grace has got it. On behalf of the UK Alumni Association, the Fayette County Cooperative Extension and UK HR Steps Temporary Employment, Thank you so much for logging into Job Club, and we'll see you again later this month on April the 26th at 9 a.m. Bye-bye.